Welcome to another tutorial from GameAntGuru.com. This is a continuation of the recording about seamless patterns. We're trying to go through as much as possible in this one, starting with the grass. There is already a written tutorial on the blog. Going over to the ground, dirt, rock, whatever we want to call this tile and the transition. I doubt I can cover the sand and the water in this video, but I'll try my best to keep them coming this time and not leave breaks as long as last time. So let's get started with the grass. Turn off all the other layers, water, sand, ground, the transition style. So basically this is one seamless tile. If we put them all on the screen, it should in the end look like this. You might still see some fine lines in the video. It's something I can't solve in Inkscape. Um, it seems to be a problem. If I zoom in close, let's do that. The gap is still there but uh, it seems to scale with the display. So we're not gonna worry about this one for now. What we want to do is start by creating the elements for this one. I have prepared bits and pieces. We start to create the grass with a simple triangle. To do that, we use the straight line tool, create our shape, and then go in and select all nodes and turn them into curves. So let's zoom in. Once we have, I saw that converted to curves. Let's do this again. Okay, there we go. To not have the grass just be dead straight and look a little bit more interesting. So we curve everything, can go a little thinner here to have a basic elongated drop shape. Okay. We curve that slightly. Okay. Now creating some minor variations, a little bit smaller and thinner. So we move this one in and a third one that's even smaller. Come on, duplicate. And a little bit more rotated. There we go. Now black grass doesn't really look that appealing, so let's start coloring it. Come on, I want all of you selected. There we go. With the grass color. And if we stack them up now, you'll see there is a problem that we always will overlap and we lose the shape of the grass itself plus we have the bottom bit that really doesn't look like grass it's round you wouldn't see grass like that so what we're gonna do we're gonna give the whole thing a linear gradient that is if 
there we go Inkscape is playing up a little bit on me today for whatever reason probably the file I created is a little bit too large because I kept all the layers of everything in here so if I take the grass now I overlap it I don't see the base and it gives me a feel of more grass come on there we go so basically this is what I've created over here it's a cluster of grass just a few elements you can see same ones used in a few places spaced out somewhat evenly you don't need to be overly precise here in this case they're all pointing the same way all facing the right if you want to go a little bit wilder and flip some to the other side it will get a more uneven pattern problem with this is the more uneven you get the easier it will be to see the repeating pattern so this one might still work because it's small elements uh, very similar and clustered up in a small shape you can also do it with color try to spread the color evenly so the orange and the green in this case are evenly balanced and not all greens are in one corner because then you will see when we repeat this shape that it is repeating so let's take the work in progress off and we'll continue with the cluster we have here I put it back into a group the next thing is our canvas in this case it's a square I set the width and height to even numbers in order to do that let's just do it again I have my rectangle draw it and then go in and set both values to uh, wrong should have done it oh yeah okay to the same numbers so that when we use the setup for the cursor keys it will match our square now we go in and change the preferences if you go to edit at the very bottom is preferences and you open the behavior tab and in there there is a section called steps and this defines the arrow key movement so when you select an object and press the arrow keys it will be moved by x amount of pixels so our square is 200 so we set the same value here so each time I press up or down our shape will move 200 pixels down 200 pixels up same with left and right okay so let's try that I select the object in this case I make a duplicate start with the corner and again duplicate it and if I move it over you can see it jumps to the other side the advantage of this is that the cut is exact where I want it in order to be seamless when the whole thing gets combined I select both duplicate them down now I can just go in and fill the area as soon as something goes out of my canvas box I create a duplicate that is on the other side so something going out on the left is put to the right side something going out at the top will have a shape at the bottom shapes that stay within 
our canvas area don't need a duplicant so I can just move them okay now I have filled the area it looks pretty even what you can do is go in and add a few shapes to fill small holes the less hole you see the harder it will be to see that it is a repeating pattern if for example we take this shape out you will always see a missing element because it will repeat throughout our pattern now that all that is put together I get the canvas shape if I can get to it that is let's zoom in and I need that copy it and paste it on top now I select the canvas underneath all my grass tiles and the canvas I copied on top and go to object clip set and voila everything is nicely cut and fits into our 200 by 200 square so if I now take all this and group it it's easier to maneuver and duplicate this one one time two times take all those and duplicate them to that side and duplicate them again to come on that was one too far to this side you can see I have a nicely tiling grass texture you can still see the line in here I'm sure there is a way to work around it I just uh, don't know how because it seems to be in the display of Inkscape I don't want to change the settings here and make my box bigger because in the end we'll export to bitmap because it is about game art and not going for print or for display so in the end we take the one box and export it as a PNG in order to do that go to file export PNG image in this case we just want to export the selection image size okay let's say we go with the 128 by 128 size tile I would export to something a lot bigger so in this case 512 by 512 I am not worried about the dots per inch we're gonna change that in game creator or any other bitmap program we're using afterwards for now we just need the right size that we can scale up scale down afterwards what you might want to do is add a few pixels around that we can trim afterwards in order to avoid lines if they appear so I'm just gonna call it grass and export it and if I go in open with we have a nice clean grass tile that we can now use in GIMP Krita or any other bitmap tool you prefer to work in to scale down to our in-game size and use as seamless grass tile
as usual, my initial idea of how long it will take to record this is way off and I'm reaching the 15 minute mark. So the ground tile and the transition will be in the next part. And after that, it's either water and sand, if there's demand for that, or the rest of the animations for the complete game art tutorial. The little robot still needs to jump, run and have a few more animations and I'd like to record those videos. I hope you enjoyed this one. Stay tuned and if you like my ramblings, subscribe to the channel and check out the blog to thegameartguru.com. That's it from me. Have a great day.